Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We're back once again with another amazing science tutorial video. I'm Coach Spivey, joined with my son. Jordan Spivey. And if you haven't already, go ahead and like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on more of our amazing science tutorial videos. And also, check us out at our website at www.fathersareninterfaces.com so you don't miss out on even more of our amazing content and materials. But without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started with our video for today, which is Solution, Solubility, and Concentration 101. So let's do this. Boom. <laughs> Now let's take a look at solubility, and this is the maximum amount of solute that can dissolve into a solution. The more solute added, the more concentrated this solution becomes. And if you notice, we have three different types of solutions. We have an unsaturated, saturated, and supersaturated solutions. So let's start off with our unsaturated solutions first. And this solution cannot have more solute added, and the solute is completely dissolved, which means this is a dilute or a weak solution. And we can tell that by looking right here. If you notice, if you look at the very bottom, there is no more solute left. And the reason why is because in this, we have a 20% solute to an 80% solvent ratio. So that means we have a lot more solvent than we do solute. And the reason why we can tell is because there is no solute at the bottom. And then let's take a look at our saturated solution. And it cannot dissolve any more solute. And this will be considered a concentrated solution or a strong solution. So let's look at this saturated one. And it cannot dissolve any more solute in the way we can tell is because we still have small amounts of solute at the bottom that have not dissolved. And the ratio for this would be more like 50% solute to 50% solvent. So notice that this is more concentrated than our unsaturated solution. Then we look at our last one, our supersaturated solution. Notice that the supersaturated solution has a lot more solute than solvent. And the way we can tell is because if you look, we are larger, have a large amount of solute at the bottom. So this would be more like 70% solute to 30% solvent. And notice it becomes unstable in these crystals at the bottom form. Now we can add heat to this super saturated solution and then we can add more solute but eventually when this super saturated solution cools down then the solute will come out of solution and it will turn into a precipitate. So once again if you look at these increasing amounts of concentration that means we have more solute to solvent as we go further along. There are three main factors that affect the rate of dissolving and the first one we'll look at is temperature. So if you increase the temperature of the solvent, you can increase the rate at which the solute and solvent particles collide or hit each other, which speeds up the rate of dissolving. So for example, so say if we had a pot of boiling water. Bear with me because my drawing is not that great. And so say if we added salt into that pot of boiling water. Now since the water is already boiling, that means its particles are moving fast. If we add those salt, salt particles in there, the salt particles will be moving fast as well. So that means the water and the salt particles will collide more often with each other. And this is what causes that salt to dissolve faster in that water. And then if we also take a look at this chart right here, notice that as our temperature increases, our rate of solubility increases as well. And this is when we're talking about solids into solvents. But then if we look at gases into solvents, as we increase the temperature, the rate of solubility actually decreases. So this is this explains why sodas that are hot taste flat because the gases have dissolved out of the soda as the temperature increases. Our next factor is stirring or shaking. And just like increasing the temperature, stirring or shaking causes the particles of the solute and solvent to collide together more often, which increases the rate of dissolving as well. So if you notice in this picture over here to the right, this person is actually stirring this solute and solvent together. The faster they stir these solute and solvents together, the faster they cause the particles to collide, which causes that solute to dissolve faster into this solution. Our last factor is surface area. And this is the amount of an obvious surface that is exposed to a solvent. So for example, when someone is making iced tea, smaller particles of sugar are going to dissolve faster than large chunks of sugar because the smaller particles have more of their surface area exposed. So let's take a look at this picture over here to the right. I know it may be hard for you to see, but if you notice, these are small little granular grains of sugar. And they're going to dissolve faster in a solvent 
because their particles are much smaller and they have much larger surface area. So most of their surface is exposed. Then if we move on to this picture right here, if you notice, these are little small chunks of sugar and they're gonna dissolve slower than a small granulated sugar because they have less of their surface exposed. And then if we move on to this picture right here, notice that these chunks are even larger. So that means it's gonna take longer for them to dissolve because a lot of their surface is not exposed. Remember, you still have that sugar that's on the inside of this cube right here. And then we move to the last one. This is the largest chunk. So this is gonna take the longest to dissolve because a large amount of it is not exposed because there's so much sugar that is contained on the inside of the sugar cube. So the smaller the particles, the faster it dissolves. The larger the particles, the slower it dissolves. Now let's take a look at solubility. And this is the maximum amount of a solute that dissolves in a given amount of solvent at a constant temperature. And solubility is expressed in grams of solute per 100 grams of solvent at a specific temperature. So we'll look at a couple of practice problems. So we'll be looking at solubility in 100 grams of water at 20 degrees Celsius. So let's check and see how much potassium iodide is soluble in 100 grams of water at 20 degrees Celsius. So the first thing we need to do is locate potassium iodide. So here's our potassium iodide right here. So let's go down to 20 degrees Celsius. Here's our 20 degrees Celsius right here, I'll circle it. Then we take it and move it all the way up until it hits the line for potassium iodide. I'll draw my dot right there and I bring it over. So that means 145 grams of potassium iodide is soluble in 100 grams of water at 20 degrees Celsius. So let's move on to our next one. We have sodium chloride, NaCl. So first, let's go ahead and locate NaCl. Here it is right here. And then we're looking at 20 degrees Celsius and we're gonna go up till we hit that line for sodium and for sodium chloride. And it's kind of hard to tell, but our line is about right there. So if we notice if we take a line over, it hits right here. So we're looking at about 37 grams of sodium chloride is soluble in 100 grams of water at 20 degrees Celsius. So now go ahead and take about 30 to 45 seconds to find the rate of solubility in grams for potassium chloride and sodium nitrate at 20 degrees Celsius in 100 grams of water. You can go ahead and pause the video now. Now let's dive into concentration of solutions. And this is the amount of solute dissolved in a specific amount of solution. So concentration can be expressed as percent by mass, percent by volume, and molarity. But in this video, we're gonna focus on percent by mass and volume. So let's look at our formula for percent by mass first. And that's gonna be the mass of our solute divided by mass of solution times 100. And it's important to know that the mass of the solution is gonna be our solute plus our solvent. So make sure you input that first when you're actually solving for your percent by mass. So number one, what is the percent by mass of five grams of iron sulfate dissolved in 75 grams of water? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and underline this right here because five grams of iron sulfate, that's actually our solute. And then our solvent, of course, is gonna be our 75 grams of water. That's gonna be our solvent. So now that we've identified those components, let's go ahead and plug ourselves in our formula. So our mass of solute, which is five grams, divided by our mass of solution. Remember, that's a solute plus solvent. So 75 grams plus five grams, that's gonna be 80 grams. And then when we divide and put it into our calculator, it should give us 0 0.0625, but we're not finished yet because we have to take that number and multiply by 100. And then when we multiply it by 100, if we put it in the calculator, or we can just move our decimal point over two spaces to the right. When we multiply it by 100, it should give us 6.25%. So now, ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and look at this practice problem that we just did together and use it as an example or a guideline for you to do practice problem number two. I'm going to give you 30 to 45 seconds to do so and you can go ahead and pause the video now. Let's check out solving for concentration of solutions by percent by volume. And if you look at our formula, we have volume of solute divided by volume of solution times 100. And remember, when we look at the volume of the solution, just like we're solving for percent by mass, we're looking at our solutes plus our solvent. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first practice problem. 
A solution is made by adding 25 milliliters of sugar to 80 milliliters of water. What is the percent by volume of sugar? So let's go ahead and identify our salute and our solvent. So our salute is gonna be that 25 milliliters of sugar. And then our solvent is gonna be our 80 milliliters of water. And now all we have to do now is plug our numbers into our formula. So we look at it, our volume of salute is gonna be 25 milliliters of that sugar divided by the volume of our solution. Remember, it's our salute plus our solvent, so it's gonna be 25 plus 80. So that should give us 105 milliliters. And so when we divide, we actually end up getting 0 0.238. But we're not done there because we have to multiply this number by 100. So we multiply by 100. And you can put in your calculator or just move your decimal point two spaces to the right. And we end up getting 23.8%. So that is our percent by volume of sugar in this problem. So ladies and gentlemen, you're gonna go ahead and take about 30 to 45 seconds to solve the second problem. And you can go ahead and pause the video now. Now it's time for our check for understanding. And you're gonna use your notes and your knowledge of solutions, solubility, and concentration to answer the problem. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Coach Spivey, signing off with my son, Jordan Spivey. And if you haven't already, go ahead and like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on more of our amazing science tutorial videos. And also check us out at our website at www.fathersoninnovations.com for more content and materials. And like I always say, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you have a wonderful, awesome, and positive day. Peace.